If you have any questions, please send them to me in the chat. Si tienen alguna pregunta, por favor, mándenme en el chat. Gracias. Interpretation should be turned on. Great. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us tonight. Um, this is our second public meeting for the Outdoor Adventure and Alternative Sports Master Plan. Um, we are delighted to have you here. Uh, I know some of you, this may be your first meeting and first interaction with us, and some of you may be with us all along. Um, so I'd like to first introduce our Executive Director, Happy Haynes, to kick off the meeting with a little bit about our goals for uh, this plan. Thank you, Stacy, and welcome, uh, everyone. I'm really excited uh, to hear from all of you and to, and to get an update on the Outdoor Adventure Master Plan. Uh, my name is Happy Haynes. I'm the Executive Director uh, of Denver Parks and Recreation. Just proud to be part of this amazing team. And I want to first thank you for all of you for participating uh, tonight. It's, uh, it's going to be fun. Uh, and very informative, I, I can assure you. Uh, and I want to give a, a shout out to our Denver Parks and Recreation team, uh, Leslie, Laura, Stacy, and, and Molly, um, and, and Meredith, and um, our consultant team for your leadership and guidance, and likewise to the steering committee and the technical advisory committee members who've spent so much time and given of your passion and just done a lot of hard work to get us where we are uh, today. So thank all of you. Um, before we begin tonight, I'd like to start with a land acknowledgement. And I wanna thank the Denver City Council and the Denver American Indian Commission for developing this land acknowledgement, uh, acknowledgement and for granting permission to us at Denver Parks and Recreation uh, to use it. Denver Parks and Recreation honors and acknowledges that the land on which we reside is the traditional territory of the Ute, Cheyenne, and Arapaho peoples. We also recognize the 48 contemporary tribal nations that are historically tied to the lands that make up the state of Colorado. We honor elders, past, present, and future, and those who have stewarded this land throughout generations. We also recognize that government, academic, and cultural institutions were founded upon and continue to enact exclusions and erasures of indigenous peoples. May this acknowledgement demonstrate a commitment to working to dismantle ongoing legacies of oppression and inequities and recognize the current and future contributions of indigenous communities in Denver. With the Outdoor Adventure and Alternative Sports Project, we continue to honor the responsibility to be good stewards of this land. In the next 20 years, we want to continue to be leaders in outdoor recreation. This master plan builds upon the vision in Denver Parks and Recreation's game plan for a healthy city. It will create a strategic framework that diversifies current recreation opportunities by providing new ways to engage with and recreate in the outdoors so Denverites can live long, healthy, and happy lives. Importantly, we want to help all Denverites feel connected to the Denver mountain parks and to also find adventure every day in our urban parks. So thank you again for uh, your commitment, for taking your time to support this effort, uh, we look forward to your comments, to your questions, and to your passion for this work. Uh, and now I will turn it back over to Stacy, and she'll do some staff introductions and get us started for the evening. Thank you. Thanks very much, Happy. Um, I won't go through everyone who's on here, but just know that there is a quite a large team of folks um, within the DPR staff, as well as our consultants. You'll hear primarily tonight from Meredith Wenskowski with Livable City Studio, who is our principal on this project. Um, we'd also like to give a few shout outs. Um, we have tonight Gordon Robertson, who's our directing of, director of planning, design, and construction. Um, I know that uh, Councilwoman Kendra Black is on tonight and we're grateful for her support for parks and for this plan. 
and uh, a number of members of the Park and Recreation Advisory Board are here tonight and uh, we're grateful for their participation as well. Um, for tonight, uh, just like to run through a little bit of what we'll go over. Uh, we just did our introductions. Um, I'm going to explain some of our feedback opportunities that are a part of this meeting in a moment. Uh, we have a summary of the public engagement that we've done so far, and then we really get into the meat of what we're trying to cover tonight, which is um, what we heard from some of that engagement. We've developed a, a plan, vision, and focus areas that we shared last time we had a meeting with everyone. And now it's time to kind of talk about what some of the goals and strategies might be as we work toward that. So these are not um, set yet, but from what we've heard from everyone and from what we've analyzed about our existing outdoor adventure opportunities uh, here in the urban parks and in the mountain parks. Um, these are some ways that we think that we might meet some of the challenges that uh, residents have put forth to us. Uh, following that, we will have a Q&A session. And that Q&A session, um, you'll be able to do things in a couple ways. At the bottom of your screen, you'll notice there's a button that says Q&A. Um, you can type a question in there and we'll be uh, monitoring that throughout if it's something easy and technical we can answer, uh, we'll do that. But if it's a question about the subject, um, we'll probably save that for the Q&A section. So, um, you know, you may have questions that come up, please drop them in at any time, but we are gonna run through the whole presentation before taking questions. And then there's also a button that you should see that says raise hand. Um, during that Q&A time, you can hit that. And uh, we may not have time to get to everyone, but we'll try to get to as many people as we can. Um, if you have raised your hand to ask a question, then we will be able to um, promote you into being a panelist for a moment and you can ask the question to the group. And, uh, you know, we'll try to answer as best as we can. Um, at the end, we'll share kind of our plan process and our next steps. Um, and that will include a little bit of an overview about where we think we're going with this and um, the next opportunities to be involved. Okay, so our feedback opportunities tonight. Um, you may have seen as you join that the webinar is being recorded. Um, that will be shared on our website. So if you know of someone who is not able to attend tonight, um, we will have a full recording of that. And uh, you know that'll be great that you can watch this back again uh, and share with your friends. Um, to interact with the presentation, we do have that general chat button so you can type a comment in there. I would encourage you if you're having any sort of technical difficulty um, with the presentation tonight or watching anything, that's a great place to put um, any sort of questions you have on the technical side and we'll be able to answer that. And then the Q&A, you'll see a chance um, to put your questions in there. And of note, if someone has asked a question and it's a question that you also have, there's a chance to upvote that question. You just click on the little uh, thumbs up sign there and those will kind of promote some of those more popular questions for us. And uh, an additional thing that we're doing, um, similar to how we ran the first public meeting, we, immediately after that we launched um, a survey. We'll be launching a survey um, after this meeting. It should come out early next week, and we'll be able to share that out with everyone as well. But we'll also be asking you all the same questions tonight. Um, so there's a chance for kind of immediate feedback on the types of things that you'd like to see as part of Outdoor Adventure here in Denver. Um, again, during the Q&A, if you'd like to um, speak live in front of everyone, uh, please click on the raise hand button. And I'll turn this over to Meredith now. Great. Thanks, Stacy. Thanks, Happy and Rosa. Um, and thanks, everyone, for being here tonight. So as Stacy mentioned, we are going to dive in. We are going to go through a presentation and we'll do Q&A um, at the end. But scattered throughout the presentation, we'll do some live polling and, <clears throat> excuse me, get a sense of you know, what everyone, uh, how everyone feels about some of the ideas that we've been uh, developing so far. And um, to start though, we're gonna do a few warm up questions because we wanna really understand a little bit more about those that are on the meeting tonight. So the first couple questions that you can answer together here um, uh, is, are you under 18 years old? We'd love to understand if we have some youth in the audience um, because, um, you know, youth are really a key part of this plan and we are doing a lot of uh, reaching out to groups. So 
um, hoping that, that some are joining tonight in the meeting. Um, additionally, we'd love to hear if you were able to participate in the first public meeting um, or if you took the online survey. Um, you know, there, this, this content kind of builds upon the last, but um, just would love to get a sense of um, who, who participated uh, previously. And if you didn't, that is completely fine. Um, it's great to have you tonight. So right. it looks like we've got the majority that have participated. So I'm going to end the poll and share the results. And Meredith, are you seeing the results? I am seeing the Great. results. So thanks, Laura. So it looks like we do have some youth in the meeting. So welcome um, to those of you that are joining. Please, please ask questions and we, we'd love to hear from you. And actually about half and half. So you can see um, half of you uh, participated previously and, and half um, this is your first meeting. So um, thanks for thanks for joining. The next thing we want to ask you and really understand kind of what area of Denver do you live in? Um, and, and this is just try to select the one, the area of Denver that best represents where you live. Um, so you can see this color coded map on the screen. Um, and I think Laura is going to launch the poll here. So if you can click on the area that best represents um, where you live so we understand where people are coming from tonight. Um, obviously, as we launch our survey following this, we will be working hard to make sure we have, um, we hear from voices in all areas of Denver. We'll give it a few more seconds here. And again, um, don't worry if it's not exact, we're just trying to get a general idea tonight uh, where people are from or where they live. Um, obviously, if you, if you don't live in Denver, you can uh, select other here. Um, you may live, work, or play in Denver, which is completely fine as well. All right, and we're at a similar percentage as last time, so I'm going to close the survey. Oh, we got one more in. Okay, closing the survey now. All right. Great. So that's great. It looks like we have representation from all areas of Denver, Northwest, Central, North, Central, and South maybe are the most, but wow, we have, we have people from all over. That's great. Um, thanks for being here. So I just want to touch on uh, the, the public engagement and kind of the, um, those that have engaged to date and some of the key themes we're hearing. Um, these are just, these are high level and we'll, you'll hear a lot more as I go through um, some of the material tonight, but we had great attendance at our first public meeting. We had 95 people attending. We had 2,887 respondents on from the online survey. So tremendous a um, uh, number of respondents on that. Um, and then we've been engaging with our technical advisory committee, Westwood Family and Nature Club, Mayor's Youth Commission and the Colorado White Water Board. And so that we have, we have heard from over 3000 people in this process already. So um, really great engagement <clears throat> that will continue to build throughout this process. As far as the themes and, and what we're hearing, um, people are really saying that there's a strong interest in having outdoor adventure activities in urban parks um, and nearby. Um, they're also expressing a, a strong desire and interest to visit Denver's mountain parks more often. People want to try new sports, but they want to do it um, with support. Um, so I'll get into that a little bit more tonight. Um, and participants want to be informed about opportunities um, and, and how they participate, um, not only how to engage in them, but, you know, how to, how to do some of these sports. So, again, you'll hear more about all of this, but we're, we're getting some really good feedback, and those are the themes that we're hearing to date. So diving into to the plan vision, this has been developed and revised um, through this process that's really been based on community and stakeholder input. Um, and so I'm going to read it out to the group. Denver Parks and Recreation will be known for experiential outdoor adventure and alternative sports for families and people of all ages, abilities, and backgrounds. Denverites will feel comfortable, safe, confident, and welcome to participate and engage in these activities that provide interactions with the natural world and build confidence. 
So kind of two important elements here. One is providing the, the experiences. And also the second part is really making people feel comfortable, welcome, and confident um, through the, uh, their um, outdoor adventure activities and experiences. Another key driver of the plan is enhancing equitable access. And so this overarching objective states that DPR will enhance equitable access to outdoor adventure and alternative sports within our park system, increase participation of diverse outdoor adventurers, and improve the health and wellness of Denver's residents through the implementation of, our, of the four focus areas. Um, this really further reinforces and promotes the focus of, of equity within the game plan. Um, and why is this important? Well, we look at the outdoor participation trends nationally. So this is national data. Um, and, and we see that it's, it's skewed towards um, white and higher incomes. Um, and this is certainly not representative of the demographics um, in Denver and, and those that we're targeting. Um, but also of note, um, on the far right here, you can see that um, youth from six, ages six to 17 um, are, have been outdoors far less, the data in 2020 compared to what, we're, what we saw in 2012. And this is something we really want to kind of reinforce through the plan, which is why that focus on youth is, is so important. As I mentioned, the, the plan focuses on improving access to recreation um, in, in all neighborhoods, but especially in the areas of greater need. Um, this map shows DPR's equity index um, and shows in the in darker green those areas of greater need. So you can see on the left the, the index indicators um, and how this um, you know, how the areas of greater need were identified from communities of color, percent of youth, low income, um, density, the 10 minute walk and roll access and, and other um, indicators as well. But really focusing here on the inverted L and this is a key component of the plan. So while the vision and the overarching objective um, are just that kind of the overarching pieces, um, through this process, we have developed these four focus areas. Um, they've emerged to guide the plan ideas and recommendations. And this is what we'll, we'll be talking tonight in these four areas. So um, the first one on the left there is about enhancing and increasing access to outdoor adventures, activities, programs, infrastructure, and partnerships so that all residents can participate in a variety of outdoor experiences. So we'll get into the activities here um, and do a deep dive there. The, the second one is creating progressive programming to better engage youth, families, and people of all ages and abilities by creating outdoor recreation opportunity, opportunities for all levels of experience. experience. So this is about creating kind of a continuum um, of experiences and opportunities from entry level to the more experienced outdoor adventures. Um, the third is improving access and transportation to Denver's mountain parks and outdoor adventure centers uh, to provide a wide range of experiences. Um, and last but not least, um, expanding marketing and communications for outdoor adventure activities and programs to inform and educate users on outdoor adventure with DP within DPR's system. So as I said, we're going to dive into activities, programs, infrastructure, and partnerships first. And uh, for those of, the, of you that joined last time or you uh, took the survey, you may remember that we have been thinking about outdoor adventure in these three categories, land, snow, and water. Um, the land um, activities are hiking, biking, climbing, camping, archery, um, everything that has to do with the land. Snow is pretty self-explanatory, but cross-country skiing, skiing, snowboarding, ice skating, tubing, snowshoeing, um, and water, obviously everything to do with water and boating, stand-up paddle boarding, river surfing, um, and more. And so we asked um, uh, in that online survey and at the last meeting about these three activities and, and desires um, that, that people, what people want to uh, 
do and, and what they'd be interested in trying for the first time or doing more frequently if money, access, and equipment were not an issue. And so this, um, these three that you can see on the screen, biking, hiking, and challenge courses are um, those land activities. So when we look at, uh, compile all the data and looked at the 2,887 respondents, this is what we heard. Biking, hiking, and challenge courses rose to the top. But we did a little bit more digging into the data to really understand, you know, what are people saying and what are the different groups um, and you know, saying and how are they different and, and uh, how, do, how can we um, create plan recommendations and ideas kind of around these differences. <clears throat> and so we, we started, we disaggregated the data that you can see here. Um, and we looked at the various race, races and ethnicities here. And so you can see there's some differences. We have archery as a top choice for Black and African American and Asian American. Um, it also came in um, with a Native Hawaiian or, or Pacific Islander. But you can see some other things that, that emerged in here. Um, tree climbing, rock climbing, and camping were in the top for a few groups. So this data is really important to us as we get into the plan um, and, and develop kind of ideas and recommendations. Um, if you're curious, you can also see the, the total responses um, in each of those categories, um, the, the number of responses um, as well. We also looked at it in a, in a different way. Um, we, we thought it was important to understand what's the difference between male and female, um, the youth under 18 and, and the over 65 age range, um, as well as house, household income. So less than 50,000 and over 150,000. And you can see some of the differences here. Um, so the under 18 group um, interested in very active recreation, no surprise there parkour, paintball, rock climbing. Um, you know, a top choice for the lower household income is camping and something that was, we, you know, jumped out to, to us. Females ranked challenge courses um, as their most desired activity. Um, and this is also interesting as it's typically conducted in a group setting um, and something we've been hearing um, uh, about desires to do more things in group settings. So related to the land activities, we have we've done some mapping to understand where do these activities currently exist within um, Denver, and this map specifically shows the urban area. Um, so what what's currently available: biking, hiking, camping, um, skateboarding, team building or challenge courses, tree climbing, slacklining, and parkour. And so these blue dots just when you when you combine all those together, um, these are where the activities are located. But you know, as we look at this map, one thing, one takeaway for us is that the West neighborhoods are better served um, and, and there are greater gaps in the North and, and the East, but there are also gaps in, in, in the West too. And so, you know, these maps really help us understand how to provide um, opportunity and access um, in all areas of Denver, um, specifically, you know, also looking at the, the inverted L. Um, you'll see other, other maps similar, and so that gray, the light gray there are also the neighborhoods of greater need, so kind of that, that inverted L, just something to note as well. Uh, DPR has also identified specific areas within um, certain parks as programming hubs, and, and what those are is it's kind of a, a concentration of outdoor recreation activities and programming. Um, they provide gear and instruction and sometimes storage and administrative space, so kind of a hub of there's a lot going on um, related to, to outdoor adventure. There's also a number of parks um, that have substantial infrastructure um, for outdoor adventure already, um, and certainly opportunities to kind of expand that, that infrastructure into more robust hubs, you know, gear, lessons, space, facilities. Um, and, and based on this and kind of the power and, and success in some of the, the current programming hubs, um, the first uh, kind of goal and strategies that we wanted to share with you all um, is uh, that the plan seeks to expand outdoor adventure hubs as locations within the larger, lar with, excuse me, as locations within larger city parks or mountain parks that support multiple outdoor adventure activities with gear, instruction, and transportation. Um, one idea we have is that each hub could have a 
different core activities that it could include, um, things like you see on the screen. So climbing, skating, or BMX, um, bungee, urban bungee jumping, challenge courses, zip lines, um, or equestrian archery and disc golf. And while we have some of this already, there is certainly opportunity to have more. Um, and that each hub could have kind of a different area of focus. So we want to hear from you all, do another polling question. So just as a kind of a, to reiterate it, that outdoor, an outdoor adventure hub is a location within um, parks that support multiple outdoor adventure activities with gear, instruction, and transportation. So you'd go to these hubs and you'd be able to do activities, but also receive instruction maybe you know, have transportation to mountain parks. So we'd love to hear, what are your thoughts on the hub concept as it relates to outdoor adventure? So we'll give you all a few 30 seconds or so to answer. So tell us if you love it, um, if you like it, but you also want act outdoor uh, adventure activities in your in your neighborhood parks or community parks. Maybe you don't like it and you would not visit. Um, you might not be sure yet. Or if you have another thought, um, you know, you could click on other and, and share your thoughts in chat. So All right, it's slowing down. I'm just gonna give it five more seconds. All right, I'm going to end the poll. Here we go. Great, thanks, Laura. So um, most of you, um, so we had 35% at I love it and 50% at I like it, but I also want outdoor adventure activities in my neighborhood park. So, you know, 85% of you said you like it or you love it, but, you know, opportunity for more, maybe a little closer, um, is what we're hearing. So that's great feedback. Thank you. So building on that idea of these hubs, um, what activities or and or programs would you be most interested in having as a primary focus within the new outdoor adventure hubs? Um, and so you can see the, the options up on the poll that was just launched. And, you know, we imagine that multiple hubs, you can have um, multiple kind of areas of focus or primary activities. So it's not that each one of these would all, they'd all have the same thing. They could be different across the city, but we'd love to just get a sense of, you know, what are the priorities? And Meredith, I'll read these out loud just for interpretation. Oh, yeah. um, we have archery, biking activities, Challenge course, disc golf, equestrian, rock climbing, skateboarding, urban bungee jumping, zip line. These are fun ones to translate. So thank you to our translator and other, which you can add in the chat. All right, and I'm gonna give it about 10 more seconds. It's getting there. Yeah, and th this one's a multiple choice. So if you have a few that are your top, feel free to select, if, select them all. But really, what are your, what are your priorities? Okay, last few seconds, get your vote in. Okay. All right, let's launch it. And the poll. Here we go. Okay, let's see here. So we had 62% of you all saying biking activities and 55 at skateboarding, rock climbing at 38. I think those are the tops, but a little bit of everything. Um, the, the other, I think I see one note here in and chat about river surfing. Um, so, so some more ideas coming through chat, which we'll cap capture as well. So thanks everyone, that, that's helpful to understand kind of the, 
those priorities, but but also kind of interest across the board and, and all of those um, as a potential primary focus. So moving along into water. So same thing here, we asked uh, people which water-based outdoor adventure activities would you be interested in trying for the first time or doing more frequently if money, access, and equipment were not an issue? Um, and out of everybody that responded, we heard boating and paddling, floating, and water sports as the top three. When we disaggregated the data and looked at it, um, again, here is the looking at the race and ethnicities, you can see there's actually a lot of um, similarities in, in what we're hearing. And, you know, there, there weren't quite as many options here on the, the water activities um, as there were land. So we're not seeing quite as much um, difference, but, you know, floating, boating, and paddling um, really coming up to the top for just about everyone. Um, water sports was top, obviously, for Native Hawaiian, uh, Pacific Islander. Um, and then fishing coming in as the, the third um, for Black and African American. As we look at the other um, groups here, um, youth again really desired more active recreation. So water sports came to the top um, and then fishing, probably no surprise there over 55, I think um, that that crept in there, but a lot of consistency. So you can, you can see uh, boating and paddling um, for male and female, you know, household incomes and, and floating. So interestingly here on the household income, the, the uh, top three priorities were the, were the same. So we've heard about a st strong desires for more water-based activities uh, throughout this process. You can see from the map here on the right that we have water activities in Denver, but they're more limited than land. I think that's not surprising. Um, you know, they, they are around our, our rivers and our water bodies. So our initial kind of our draft goals here are, are twofold. You know, we, we know we have challenges with, with water quality in some areas, and the plan also really must work in harmony and support the efforts of the One Water Plan. So as we look at some of these short-term and long-term goals, um, a few opportunities have emerged. Um, the first one being a kayak course, more kind of gates and channels, uh, potentially along the South Platte River. Uh, more near-term opportunities for, for water-based recreation at Rocky Mountain Lake, Garfield, and Berkeley. Um, and then long-term efforts um, include Smith, Farrell, and then Sloan's Lake as a priority hub for water-based activities. Um, so certainly, you know, making sure we have, the, you know, near-term opportunities, but, but making it, you know, not forgetting these longer-term um, uh, efforts and, and opportunities as well. But additionally, uh, the plan recommends exploring strategic partnerships uh, with nearby reservoirs such as Chatfield and Cherry Creek to expand some of the water-based programming. So, you know, we've really heard the, the strong desire for this. And so the, the opportunity for partnerships um, to, to expand that into some of the nearby reservoirs um, has come up as a, a great opportunity. Oh, wait, sorry. Okay, so snow and ice. Um, same question here. What are people most interested in trying for the first time or doing more frequently? Um, you can see here cross-country skiing, snowshoeing, skiing, and snowboarding came to the top. In looking at the disaggregated data, snow tubing uh, was a top desire for Black, African American, Hispanic, Latinx, and American Indian, Alaska Native. Um, so that came up, you know, among those groups. It wasn't in the top three when we looked at, at overall. Um, and then ice skating as well came in for for a few groups too. And looking at um, the other groups, you can see in, in all but the youth, um, snowshoeing and most had cross-country skiing. Um, so youth being distinctly different, I think that's a theme that we're, we saw in a lot of this data. Um, but, but snowshoeing um, and cross-country skiing was, was a, a key theme of, uh, really among everybody. And then snow tubing for the, the household income under, under 50,000 was, was the top priority. So based on what we've heard, um, the need to increase snow and ice access in both the urban and mountain parks is really important. 
So one strategy is to expand Echo Lake Winter Activity Center as an outdoor adventure hub um, to include cross-country skiing and touring, ice skating, uh, ski and snowboard terrain parks. So there's activities up there today, um, but you know, expanding this and making it even more of a destination and a hub within the mountain park system. Um, but also identifying urban and mountain locations for sledding, tubing, snowshoeing, and cross-country skiing within urban parks in the urban areas. So um, really identifying those locations that are closer to, you know, within the neighborhoods um, and within the urban area um, where we can uh, provide more opportunities um, for, for these snow and, and ice adventures. So moving on to progressive programming. So again, this is more about kind of the continuum, right? So it's about entry level, uh, people that are just starting um, and gaining kind of skills in, in, in some activity um, to those that are intermediate and advanced and making sure that we have opportunities both kind of, um, you know, within the, the infrastructure, but also within the programming to accommodate this spectrum. One important aspect of this is really understanding the barriers and, and why people haven't participated. So we asked a question um, on the survey, um, what reason best describes why you haven't participated in outdoor adventure activities? Um, and you can see the top response was no equipment. Um, second, not near my house. And the third, um, not knowing how to do the activities. Um, just some other um, uh, data that we've heard, more qualitative feedback, is that um, respondents expressed a desire to experience activities more in a social setting, um, social or group setting. Um, survey respondents indicated that child care uh, was an issue and that there's a desire to engage in more family-oriented activities. Um, and that the gear libraries, the My Outdoor Colorado gear libraries that are uh, that exist today, um, or one exists today, are successful, and other communities are interested in having them. But we do have to think about what is required as far as staffing and storage and um, equipment, kind of the overall organizational piece. So again, we we disaggregated the data, and you can see on on the barriers and the the race and ethnicities no equipment was the top across the board. So this is very consistent. We're hearing it for, from all groups. Um, and then, you know, the, the second and third um, uh, levels kind of were, were a little bit different, but you can see a lot of consistency not near my house and not knowing how to do the activities. Also looking at the, the other groups here, um, a little bit different, but the top two were consistent. So again, equipment and not near my house. So it really varied just a little bit, um, but we're hearing kind of loud and clear that um, those are two of the biggest barriers. So in um, thinking and developing these draft goals and strategies, you know, the, the, the data we, um, we received and the feedback we've heard has been really um, helpful and informative. Um, and so the first is to expand gear libraries across the city and mountain parks with a focus on the inverted L. Um, so uh, these could be located in outdoor adventure hubs that we just talked about or recreation centers. Um, and thinking about the gear libraries really having um, gear that uh, uh, for water, snow, ice, and land activities. And so there could be a um, little bit of difference based on where they are, but have providing gear for all types of outdoor adventure is important. Um, another one is to create outdoor adventure clubs to reduce barriers for specific groups. So this really hits on um, those that may be a little apprehensive to get out and try new activities because they want to do it in a group setting or a social setting. Maybe their friends don't um, want to or don't know how. And the idea of creating clubs, youth, maybe active older adults or women, um, you know, creating clubs to kind of um, provide that social or group setting for these activities. Um, and additionally, um, another goal is to expand outdoor adventure programming to increase the number of diverse participants. And what this looks like is it could be 
um, group, family, or an an intergenerational programming um, that really hits on entry-level activities. So this could be trips um, that have activities at multiple levels. And, you know, one example would be um, a trip that goes up to a mountain park and offers a hike, um, but maybe offers another activity for those that are less, less active or hikes at two different levels, you know, so somebody that's more of an experienced hiker, somebody that's a little bit more active, and then one that is, um, you know, maybe for a, a different group that is far less active and um, uh, it doesn't want to do as strenuous a hike, um, but that would allow people within a family to do some programming, um, maybe of different ages, and they could do it together. Um, and then also uh, thinking about how adaptive rec, uh, recreation could be integrated into all outdoor adventure activities. So a few questions for you all. Um, this first one, when trying an outdoor adventure activity for the first time, how are you most likely to participate? So you should see the pop up on your screen. Um, and I'll read these, uh, read these. Um, actually, Laura, will you, I can't see the entire, all the text. <laughs> yeah, it also, I think the first one was too long, but it essentially says, I would like to participate in a programmed activity facilitated by DPR. Um, this would be like our learn to ski and ride program, stand up paddle board, boarding or hiking. Second option is I would like to participate in a programmed activity facilitated by somebody other than DPR. Or third one, I would try the activity if my children or children in my life were interested in it. Next is I would like to try it with my friends or other adult family members. I would like to do it on my own is the next option. And I'm not sure. And about 10 more seconds, I think. I think this one has multiple choice as well. So you can select a few different ones if they seem appropriate to you. Okay, right, it has wanna... slowed down. So if you're entering, go ahead and submit that now. Okay, I'm going to close the poll. Here we go. Great. Thanks, Laura. So the top response would be, I would like to try it with my friends or other adult family members. So 72% of you said that. Um, and the second up was, I'd like to participate in a programmed activity facilitated by DPR. So um, although there were definitely response, responses in all categories, those are the top three too. So really, really helpful to understand um, how people would like to engage in activities. We also want to understand from you all, where would, where would you typically get geared to participate in outdoor activities? So you can see it popped up on your screen, hopefully. So first, um, I would purchase it on my own. I would borrow from somebody I know. The third is I would rent gear from an outdoor gear store, such as REI or any out gear store outdoor gear store. Fourth is I would borrow from a gear library for free. The fourth, the uh, fifth one, I would join a program where gear is supplied and last other. So you can feel free to add something to the chat if you have another idea. And so Meredith, quick question related is what gear are we talking about? Um, that came up in the chat. And I think it refers to any gear you might need to get outdoors and do some activities. So that could be skis or snowshoes or a paddleboard, a variety of different items you might need. Even hiking boots for those that might right. not have those. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, everything from yeah snowshoes and stand up paddle boards to bikes, um, camping equipment, um, really anything you would need to participate in these types of activities. So we'll give it just a few more seconds, Laura, and then we can close this. 
Yep, it has slowed down. So just a few more seconds, get your last votes in. Okay, going to end the poll. All yep. right, so great. So most of you said, 68% said I would purchase my own, but interestingly, all the others um, were, you know, kind of neck and neck with each other more or less. So we've had people that would borrow from a gear library, would join programs, would rent or borrow from friends. So um, great, that's, that's good feedback. Thank you. All right, moving on to access and transportation. So DPR currently provides transportation for um, uh, some of the mountain park programming, um, winter park ski and ride, Echo Lake snowshoe trips, youth adventure, multi-day adventures. There's a number of activities that DPR provides uh, transportation for, and, and some of you all may have taken it in the past. Um, but we also know that that access to the mountain parks is really, really challenging. Um, you know, public transit does not um, easily get people there. There are very limited routes. Um, it is, and it's very challenging to get there. We've heard also that RTD is not reliable or affordable. Um, you know, transportation and kind of proximity to it's been challenging, um, especially during the pandemic. Um, and that we also were trying to balance <clears throat> programmed activities um, with those that are non-programmed or unstructured and providing transportation during all those times. So what that means is if you're taking a, um, a programmed activity like a, a snowshoe um, trip up there and you have transportation, that's wonderful. But we also want you to be able to get up to the mountain parks on your own and maybe take your family or friends up there and do, you know, snowshoeing on your own that is not in, um, considered part of a, a programmed event. So as we have been thinking through this and working through this in the process, there are some clear goals and strategies that have emerged. <clears throat> um, one is just to improve options, ease and efficiency to and from the mountain parks. Um, and an idea around a free or low cost shuttle from recreation centers or hubs to mountain parks um, that could encourage some of that non, those more non-programmed visits that I mentioned or non-facilitated. Um, this also could be a, a mountain park shuttle um, from a multimodal hub such as the terminus of the like um, the LRT in Golden, so kind of a more of a hub that uh, people could get to and go from there. So a couple different thoughts around shuttles. Um, and then also the idea of providing transportation to improve access in urban parks and, and between outdoor adventure hubs. So um, thinking about a free or low cost shuttle between these, um, these uh, rec centers and outdoor adventure hubs, especially if they have different uh, primary kind of focus areas or, or activities. So we want to ask you all a question, and that is, what would help the most in getting you to visit Denver's mountain parks? And so the, the polling question is launched. Um, what would help you in getting to visit Denver's mountain parks? Um, the first is a free or low cost shuttle. The second, small group programs. Um, the third is events that happen in the mountain park. So maybe there's a moonlight snowshoe event or a bike event, paddleboard events, kind of a big, you know, event that becomes almost, you know, a, a, a creates kind of a destination for you to get you up there. Um, also knowing more about what activities are available. Um, or if you have another idea of what would help you um, in getting to visit Denver's mountain parks, uh, please share in chat. And if someone can throw into chat our mountain park link, we've got a variety of mountain parks that Denver owns, so we get to operate how some of the things work on there. So yes, Red Rocks is often included in there, but um, we've got others, so someone can throw the link in there. So we'll give it a few more seconds here. All right, it is slowing down. Go ahead and get your last 
input in. All right, thanks for putting that link in there, Stacy. Okay, I'm going to end the poll. Great, thanks, Laura. So you can see the the free or low cost shuttle is came to the top. Thirty three percent of you all said that. Knowing more about what activities are available, where the mountain parks are, um, that that. 30% of you said that. Events would be a draw for many of you. Um, small group programs, maybe a little bit less so among this group specifically. So um, we'll be asking a lot of these questions in the online survey as well. So it'll be great to get, um, it's great to hear your feedback tonight and then um, the, the, the survey as well. So we just asked you what would get you up there, but we wanna get, diet, kind of zoom in on this uh, low, uh, no cost shuttle and ask how likely would you be to utilize a low or no cost shuttle from a few recreation centers to the mountain park so um, you know it wouldn't be likely every single recreation center but from a few across the the, the urban area um, we'd love to hear if that's something that you're very likely to take somewhat likely you're neutral maybe you're not not so sure uh, probably not um, and definitely not likely. Okay, maybe about five more seconds. All right, All right, I'm going to end the poll. Great, thanks. So most of you said somewhat likely. So interesting, it's not, um, I mean, it's kind of across the board here, but a, a majority of you, say just over 50% really said very likely or somewhat likely would, would take that low or no cost shuttle. So um, that's really helpful to under, understand the kind of um, the, the demand for something like that as we, as we explore these, these options through the plan. So the last, uh, I, I've got a few more slides here and another question, and then we'll get to Q&A, but marketing and communications is another um, kind of big area that we've been hearing about. And, and what we've heard is that there's really a lack of knowledge and understanding about when and where outdoor adventure activities are offered. Um, this is consistent with, with what would get you to the mountain parks, kind of knowing more ab about um, what's there and what's going on. Um, we're hearing this more consistently or more broadly. Um, people also want to make sure they see themselves in the marketing and communications. Um, and with this plan really focusing on equity and the inverted L, it's, it's a really um, critical part of this plan. Desire for leaders that look like the community they represent. So that, that goes along with kind of seeing themselves in, in the communications, but in that leadership as well. Um, and then more broadly, more education is needed kind of on not only what the opportunities are, but how to do things, right? How to do some of these activities that you've never done. If you've never cross-country skied um, and you don't know how to do it, you would need a little bit of education um, to, to get started. And so diving into our draft goals and strategies, the, that first one about is broadening education for outdoor adventure activities. And so some more specific ideas or strategies here are uh, providing pre-adventure workshops, or this could be you know, in person at a hub or maybe how-to videos for people to look at or view on their own, um, educating people on safety, um, you know, preparation, how to use equipment. Um, and really making sure that we expand communications around activities to include um, a lot of information, level of experience required, the cost, the equipment you might need, the duration and the program leader. Um, and so thinking about something like camping, right? You might need some education communication around all the equipment you may need. Um, if it's a program, um, you know, going up and doing a snowshoe trip, you'd really want to understand who the program leader is, 
how long it might take. Um, do you need, can you be, uh, you know, a novice or brand new editor? Do you need to be more experienced? So having all that information available um, is an important component of, of um, the, this goal. Make leadership, <clears throat> instructors, staff, and communications reflective of the communities being served. So this is about increasing people of color and multilingual instructors within program facilitation as well as leadership positions. So it's about um, you know, making sure that we're representative um, across not only communication, but the, the leadership positions and, and facil facilitation as well. Um, and the last one here is about maximizing um, alternative methods of engaging and communicating with outdoor adventure participants. We're all well aware that, um, you know, being kind of having apps and we're all, you know, mobile devices are a, a, a part of our lives these days. And um, so certainly an opportunity to capitalize on this, especially as we think about youth. Um, potentially having a DPR outfitter mobile unit to share information on outdoor adventure. Um, this could be a, you know, some sort of mobile unit that moves around the city for people to sign up, provide gear demonstrations, or even loan a little bit of gear. Um, thinking about how that could dovetail with a, a, a DPR outfitter mobile app. So this could include um, all that information on the activities and the, the programs that are offered, level of experience, what to pack or bring, um, the hours, the guides, all that information. And then um, lastly, you know, thinking about how we can work with schools and organizations providing youth program to increase this awareness and engagement. So again, keeping, um, you know, working with the youth, getting them out there um, and participating in these outdoor adventure activities, um, making them feel comfortable and, um, and, and building that kind of within the, the DNA of our city and, and the way everyone operates. So we wanna know from you all, what are the best ways to reach you to let you know about outdoor adventure programs and locations? So we've heard a lot about people not knowing um, how to learn or how to find out about this stuff. So we want to hear if it's the first option, social media, that could be Instagram, social media, Facebook. Um, it could be emails um, that could be from Nextdoor or RNOs um, or other kind of email lists. Digital boards or flyers at recreation centers or the DPR activity guide. Um, staff at recreation centers may share this information local newspapers, TV or radio, school announcements, an app on my phone, um, a church or religious institution or other. And you know, feel free to share your ideas in chat. I think about five more seconds, people are still putting in their answers. Okay, it has slowed down. I'm going to end the poll. There we go. Great, thanks, Laura. So, um, email lists was was a clear front runner here. Seventy five percent of you said that. I know many of us are on email a lot, so that makes sense. But digital boards and flyers at the rec center or the DPR activity guide social media, um, those are probably kind of the, the second tier. And you can see there's actually kind of wi widespread across everything. We're hearing, um, it looks like people get information in a lot of ways that the church or religious institution may be um, less information shared, but anything um, as we kind of move into the, <clears throat> the Q&A, anything specifically, Stacey, you see in the chat that you wanted to highlight related to this or anything else? Yeah, I think Molly um, pulled out some things um, in the Q&A, so I'll let her. Yeah, thanks, Stacey. Uh, <laughs> um, well, we're going to, let's go ahead and start our question 
and hopefully answer a portion. Um, I was looking at the chat throughout um, the conversations, but thank you so much. It's been a busy chat. So it's um, if I miss something or you are dying to ask us a question, please raise your hand and I'll see it and we'll try and get to everyone that we can tonight. Um, I'm going to start um, with a question that was in the chat by Leah. Um, which was, would hubs, ha, uh, would hubs ever offer camping trips or outings for beginners? And I think the, the answer is yes. Um, you can see we would love to. We haven't gotten into that sort of detail yet um, for the plan. So um, you can see that like the, um, when Meredith showed the charts of like what people wanted to see the most, camping was on there. So I think that that is um, where our head is at and where we're headed, but nothing's been ironed out yet. So that's why we want to hear from you about what you guys want to see. Um, so that was the first question. Then I'm going to pitch this one um, to Leslie, um, and then we'll go to some of the hands that are raised. So I, uh, it says, from Kelsey, I've been told some Denver Public Libraries provide gear slash park passes, et cetera. Do you guys work with them at all? Is there opportunity to utilize the libraries for better access? Yeah, that's a great question, Kelsey. So the Denver Public Libraries, they do have Colorado State Parks passes through a partnership with uh, Colorado Parks and Wildlife. Forgive me for my voice. I've been struggling with some uh, voice challenges and being ill but yes we do partner with them on a ton of different things both um activation in parks and events and then we also work with them closely through our my denver card so every kid under the age of 18 that's a dps student has access to the recreation centers for free and of course a, a public library card which then links to their ability to check out state parks passes and get the backpack program, which includes a ton of different activities for folks to do at the parks. We do do a lot of crossover. Thanks, Leslie. So I see Zach's hand is unraised. If we can allow him to talk. Oh, I can allow him to talk. But before we do, I want to um, get Ryder, Breck, and Porter teed up. So raise your guys' hands um, for, I understand you guys have comments or questions, but I wanna be sure um, we give you the floor. So just raise your hand and you'll be next after Zach. Um, so Zach, I'm gonna allow you to talk. If you wanna unmute yourself. Yeah, can you hear me? Yep. Cool, I, uh, yeah, so Ben had commented, we're friends, he commented earlier in the session, uh, <laughs> just about the two latest skate parks that Denver, the city of Denver has built. And they're just really, really bad skate parks. And I want to try to avoid the city. We're, we're Denver's a very cool city and we're very like progressive and, and all the outdoor extreme sports that we do. It's like, it's just inexcusable to build a skate park like that. So how can we avoid that in the future? Can we like get involved in a certain way? Deke, do you want to jump in a little bit on this one? Thanks, Zach. Yeah, Zach, good question. Uh, yeah, that is definitely raising a red flag and come to our attention. And um, for everything going forward, we're going to make sure to include some skate park specific companies and people that have good resumes and experience building skate parks. So that is definitely going to be fixed in the future. Um, and that's part of this plan, though, is to also get in a place where we are ready to build and have a good game plan for skate parks throughout the city. Thanks, Deke. So Porter, I'm going to allow you to talk right now. You'll have to unmute yourself, but will you guys introduce yourselves to um, the whole team and then um, any comments or questions you have? Well, I'm by myself right now, but uh, my friends are on a different uh, device right now. And well, so I'm Porter and uh, well, me and my friends just, uh, we skate sometimes and we wanted to uh we don't really have a skate park near us and we want to get to a skate park without bugging our parents to take us there and we just want like a close place to skate where do you live porter what neighborhood 
Uh, <laughs> well, we live in Welshire, uh, Denver, so like we don't really have much near us. Gordon, do you want to talk about skate parks and maybe more opportunities for them? Yeah, thank you, Porter. Um, I agree. We definitely need more skate parks and more places around the city so you don't have to come all the way downtown to go to a great skate park. Um, I hope this plan recommends that we have more skate parks and in places that make the most sense. So I hope that one of those places is near your neighborhood. And uh, I hope that we get more skate parks throughout the whole city as, as a result of this plan. Um, oh, I see Stacy just allowed Christine to talk. Go ahead, Christine. Uh, yeah, so. Oh, you may have to get closer to your microphone. Can you hear it? Yep. Okay. Hi, so this is, yeah. This is Breck and Porter, and we've also been working on with the uh, skate park thing that Porter yeah. was talking about. And yeah, we basically just wanted a more convenient location for a skate park because that's something that we both, or that we all find like something that is like fun for us to do. And we want to find, we want a more convenient location so we could like ride our bikes or even skate there. Mm -hmm. So it'd be just way easier. Yeah, we don't want our, our parents to take us because they're usually busy. So we, uh, yeah, we just don't want them to take us. So, so we can just bike there. Well, that's it. I think we're changing the name of the plan to the fun plan instead of outdoor adventure, right? <laughs> Thanks, guys, for being on and let us know if you have any more questions or comments. But with that, I'm actually going to, um, there was a question in the chat that I think is important to address, and I'm going to hand it over to Stacy. Um, it's one about us um, addressing adaptive activities in the plan. Do you want to talk about that, Stacey? Yeah, um, you know, we thought about making that a whole separate section of the plan, but it really um, is more in line with the mission of DPR to include those activities in as many of the programs and um, infrastructure that we can. So we do have an adaptive recreation team that works on specific adaptive recreation programs, but we also have gear that enables um, anyone who would like to participate, who can use that gear to participate in any program that we have. So um, that may include some of our climbing programs where um, people can uh, sign up for a, a, you know, anything in our program guide that's climbing, but there is gear that makes that program accessible for them. Um, it's something that we'll continue to work on. Um, I see the comment about more adaptive uh, parks and playgrounds. Um, that's also something that we're trying to push on. So it's definitely top of mind and um, something that we want to make sure that we're including uh, as we move forward with the plan. Thank you. Thanks, Stacey. Um, I'm going to go ahead and unmute Tim or allow Tim. I see your hands up. If you want to unmute yourself, you should be able to talk now. Thanks. Um, I just wanted to chime in. I live in Central Park at 25th and Xenia, and I can see and hear the little concrete in-ground skate park across the street in the Greenway Park. And it's wonderful. I, I, I have to imagine it's the most popular park in my neighborhood um, and is always filled with kids, skaters. And I, I like the idea of you having hubs and I know you have the downtown Denver skate park, but the access to, to good quality facilities is important too. And it's something that Arvada is doing as well. They have an enormous skate park, but then they also have sort of peppered concrete parks in other parts of Arvada that are good and accessible to the others. Thanks, Tim. I appreciate your comments. If anyone has further comments for Tim, let me go ahead, Deke. Yeah, Tim, uh, this is Deke here. I just wanna let you know, we are piloting some skateboard programming actually, and we will be at that park this summer. So uh, keep an eye out for your summer activity guide and you'll find a skateboard program that uh, anybody of uh, ages, I think eight to 14 will be able to sign up for to get started. And we're going to include safety equipment, skateboards, and anything for anybody that uh, wants to get started in skateboarding. So that that that's great. Yeah, my neighbors often ask me how to get involved, but it's good to hear something's happening. Well, thanks.
Thanks, Tim. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and um, actually, I see Jessica. I saw you in the chat, so I'm going to allow you to talk, though. I assume it's about partnerships, but go ahead and I'm going to will you to talk and go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi, guys. <laughs> this, Hi. Is, this is absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for hosting this because it really gives us a chance to hear like what the community is looking for and then what the resources are currently available. I know for me personally, I'm the CEO and founder of an adventure sports company here in Colorado. We have over a thousand black women, men. We have tons of clubs. We have at least five clubs that really support what you guys are doing. There's also a ton of other organizations that are run by the BIPOC community as well. And from what I've noticed is that the BIPOC community wants to learn and adventure and do edu and, and get educated by BIPOC outdoor leaders, right? We need that leadership. Um, so partnering with partners of the outdoors kind of sucked because they were like, hey, we're not really taking anybody right now. So how do we move forward with creating this amazing relationship with this amazing strategic plan that you guys have in place? But how do we offer these services to our community. Another thing is that you guys are asking about marketing. There, I could count on, on two hands. There are at least 10 outdoor adventure companies ran by the BIPOC community that has access to marketing to our communities. And so that's another great way to really tap in and say, hey, Jess, can you send this out? Hey, Taisha, can you send this out? Hey, Romel, send this out. Um, I will say this, that Colorado Parks and Wildlife has an amazing relationship with tons of outdoor organizations. And when they have announcements, they send it directly to us. I don't have that relationship established with you guys because I can't get in the door with partners of the outdoors. And so I would love to support this mission. And I know there are tons. You got Patricia with Colorado Black Packers. I could go down the whole list. But I'm saying that we're here and we want to support this. So don't forget to meet with the community leaders in the BIPOC sector in the outdoor industry so that we can be a huge impact in creating these spaces to make them more equitable for the underserved communities. Thanks so much, Jessica. Your point is very well taken. I don't know if Meredith, if you want to address some of what she said, if you have thoughts or uh, Leslie, I want to save your voice, but so I'm going <laughs> to hand it to Meredith first. Yeah, thanks, Jessica, for your thoughts. I mean, I, I think that we, you know, we've been working with um, our, our technical advisory committee and hearing some similar thoughts as well. So I think, you know, through this process, what we're going to what, what the kind of phase that we'll work on after after this meeting is we'll get into the partnerships um, more. We'll be doing a deeper dive. So um, it'd be great to, you know, get get your information too and, and start to kind of connect with others as well as we do a, a deeper dive into that um, because there's so much happening and so many kind of great minds around this already, um, you know, really kind of syncing up and, and linking with, with you all to to share um, resources and partner um, is really important. So thanks for joining tonight. And um, yeah, definitely share, share your info so we can connect. Okay, I'm going to, I see um, Susanna, I'm going to allow you to talk. So go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, um, I just want to share that I serve as a human rights commissioner for the UN. And I've been sitting on a lot of uh, in a lot of commission meetings, and then just in regards to um, redefining how we look at healthcare. And I think that in Colorado, healthcare looks like being outside. And um, one of the things that I mentioned to the commissions, I think the fact that you have so many youthful voices in the room should show you that you, they need a seat at the table. And so what I've asked all the commissions as I've been sitting in on meetings is how, if we truly want our youth to have a voice, then give them a space. And I think David Riordan, I want to lift up what he put in the chat. He's asking for a citizen's advocate, but I'm also asking for a youth advocate in particular, because that's a whole generation of information that we're still very disconnected from. And as we're talking about resiliency and healthcare moving forward, there has to be a way to uplift their voices. So I just want to tell you all, thank you for being here at the meeting. 
and um, we're trying to get your voices and your needs heard. Thank you. Thank you, Susanna. And I will say um, youth is definitely a big target of this plan. And um, we've been reaching out to them in a lot of ways, trying to target them. Cece, do you wanna talk about some of our outreach um, with youth in the plan? Yeah, we um, heard people loud and clear that we wanted to get more youth involved. And so um, there's a couple things that um, we've done and a way that you all can help us in our next phase of that. Uh, the first is that we have um, worked with the Mayor's Youth Commission. Um, a lot of that was finding out what they like to do and how to reach youth. Um, I know that that's a problem. I will admit to being um, an old lady who doesn't always know how to reach people that are uh, 18 and under. And so we are grateful for every time you all show up to meetings. Um, that is really important um, that you're here and we're glad that you're able to um, share a voice out publicly. That was something that I was definitely not comfortable doing when I was your age. So thank you, first of all, for being here and know that at any of our meetings um, and surveys and activities, you're welcome. Um, so I hope that you'll continue to join in. And to that end, um, we wanted to make sure that we were able to hear from you and not just your parents or your family members. So with our next survey that's launched, um, we do have a section, um, don't worry parents, we're not asking your kids for demographic information, uh, but we do have a section where um, if you indicate that you're 18 and under, there are some targeted questions to how you like to participate in the outdoors. Um, so it's not just your parents, it's um, how you like to do things, how you like to learn about things, who you like to do them with. Um, it's okay to tell us that you like to do them with your friends only or something like that. That, but um, I think that's important if you are a parent or you work with schools or kids um, and you're on this call, please share that link with people and let them know that um, it's great for families to fill out the survey together, but um, please let your kids do it too. We want to hear directly from um, our younger members um, of the community and our future decision makers when it comes to these things. Okay. Thanks, Stacey. <laughs> I'm going to um, go ahead and allow Ben, I see your hands up. I'm going to allow you to talk. Just unmute yourself and go ahead. Cool. Um, I wanted to thank you guys for putting this meeting on. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm a lifelong skateboarder, and I just wanted to express my interest in a DIY skate park, um, an area where skaters can come together um, and engage the community and build something together. Um, shout out to all the young skaters out here um, putting their support in for, for more places to skate, so. Thanks, Ben. Um, Deke, do you have any, I don't know if you have any comments. No, he pretty <laughs> much. Very straightforward uh, uh, comment. Ben. Yeah, he explained what a DIY skate park was, which I think a lot of you, us were wondering. So that was good. Thanks for the comment and the <laughs> explanation, Ben. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Deke. Um, Maddie, I see your hand is up. I'm going to allow you to talk and go ahead and unmute yourself. Yeah. Hey, guys. Um, I'm a longtime DPR employee and uh, instructor and whatnot. And it's a huge stoke to hear these kids on here, man. That's what I do, what I do for a living. I took a pay cut a decade ago do this listen to the kids let's go you know i'm on this thing because of the uh the bmx uh park down by kennedy um that's what got me on this thing through uh kendra black and i've been on here the entire time i mean i'm gonna i'm a 51 year old dude who still rides bmx bikes and skates you know so let's go i mean i know it's not going to be cheap but let's be honest, man, the 20, last 23 months is pretty much blown for everybody. And, you know, I, I miss my places where I used to instruct for DPR and COVID has shut it down. And, you know, the outside is where it's at. And, you know, let's go on this stuff. And like I put on the, uh, on the chat, without our kids, we have nothing. So stoked to hear these little dudes on here, man. I can hear their voices. <laughs> They're a long way away from shaving once a day, man. 
Uh, you know, it fires me up. So let's let's go on this, guys. You know, let's get these skate parks going. Let's get these BMX parks going. I mean, the weather, the the, the, the climate's changing, guys. It's getting warmer here. You know, we're going to have outdoor access on these things. I mean, you're like, look at look at the golf. I mean, you can golf almost year round now in Denver. Things are changing. The climate's changing. Build some skate parks. Build some BMX parks. And, you know, can I also say, hey, let's get back to getting some instruction for our kids in the pools and uh, at the at parks and recs. But anyway, I think I, you guys know who I am right now. But anyway, hey, and, and thank you again. This is awesome. This is how we grow. This is how we get better. Without our kids, we got nada. So I appreciate you guys doing this, but let's go. <laughs> Thanks, Maddie. We, we share your enthusiasm and the kids' enthusiasm too, for sure. Um, I, <laughs> Molly, do you mind ahead, if I just Leslie? add? <laughs> Maddie, to all of your points, I think we're getting back there. We actually just opened up our spring registration. We have over um, 3,000 programs that have been filled up to 95%. And so we're getting back. And uh, February 9th launched our Ruby Hill Rail Yard. So I'm excited for the radical energy that you brought um, to this table. So thank you for that. And yes, it's for the kids. Thanks, Leslie. Um, Deke, there was a question about, I'm sorry, I you guys are chatting so much that I lost it, but I was basically asking what skate park um, to get like entry on ramp kids in, um, which ones would you recommend? Well, we, uh, we're going to be do, doing skateboard beginner programming at, I think, six different skate parks. So look for that in the activity guide, uh, Montbello, Green Valley Ranch, Johnson Rec Center, the Central Park um, skate park over there, La Alma Center. Uh, so we're going to try to activate and start piloting these programs and keep expanding it too. So um, keep an eye out. And the activity guide is probably your best bet to find out where those are. Yeah, and I've been trying to also keep up with the questions that you guys asked in um, the question and answer box. Thank you for being so active in it. Um, there is the There are themes um, just about us leveraging what is already occurring in the city that is definitely a big part of this plan is for us to definitely not reinvent the wheel, but see where we can have partners and what that looks like. And um, especially we know, Justin, your point, um, Justin had a comment that with uh, we have so many outdoor brands. So how can we really look at partnering them with them to help us offset gear costs and program costs? And I think that that is a great idea and I appreciate that. Um, we're doing some of that now, but we can definitely be better. Um, and that's what I think one of the ultimate goals of this master plan is, is to, to see how we can do better. So thank you. Um, is there any other, we're almost at time. We only have three minutes. So I kind of stopped perfectly. <laughs> I don't think we have time for any other questions. So um, Meredith or Stacy, do I turn it back to you guys? There we go. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you so much, Molly. And thanks for everyone who um, asked questions, who gave us great ideas in the chat and in the Q&A. Um, we have a lot of follow-ups to do with a lot of people, and it's just really exciting to see um, so much passion around these activities. Um, we, uh, you know, are not anywhere close to being done with this plan. Um, as you can see, we're kind of at the end of February here, and we're just starting to think about um, what those partnership opportunities might look like, as Molly mentioned. Um, we also have, um, a, we're going to be kind of starting on what does a final plan look like? Um, you know, how do we kind of take all of these ideas and think about something that really puts um, 
you know, DPR into a good position to act on what we've heard from people and to, um, you know, not, we don't have to reinvent wheels. We, uh, we know that there's a lot of great stuff out there and we look forward to um, digging into the ways in which um, DPR can add to um, this great outdoor adventure space. Uh, so the next things that you'll see from us um, in just a moment, I'm going to share a link to our survey and would ask that you share that with um, your communities and friends as well. And then we hope that later in the spring, um, maybe it'll be a nice warm day and not a, a zero degree morning, but we'll have uh, another community meeting. And we'll also be sharing all of this information on the DPR website. Um, oh yeah, so it looks like uh, kind of early June, we'll have another meeting here. But um, Meredith, if you'll go to our um, the next slide here. Yep, so if you go to um, denvergov.org slash park projects, um, there is a page here for this outdoor um, adventure and alternative sports master plan. That's where you'll be able to find this um, video of the meeting tonight, as well as the slides and flyers about our survey. And I've got um, a sheet here. I'm going to, I think I can do this. Can I share my screen? Maybe not. Um, all right, well, <laughs> I'll drop the uh, link to the survey in the chat here, um, or maybe someone else can, but um, we uh, look forward to having this open for a few weeks. And again, if you're able to share that um, with your friends and neighbors and encourage um, the youth in your community in particular to take it and let us know directly the things that they would like to do, um, we are grateful for that. And, um, oh, yeah, so there's the survey link there in our um, chat there. And uh, we can't wait uh, to speak with you again about this. Um, contact us anytime. There's information again on our website about how to do that and how to stay involved. And the survey should show up when you close the meeting. So keep an eye out for that. Hopefully that works, but thank you and share the link and we'll be sending it out via email as well. Thanks everyone. Thank you all. I'm gonna go Thank ahead you. and close the meeting. Have I a see great evening. A few chats are coming in, but I also, I'll leave it up for about five seconds and then I'm gonna close it down, but we are saving everything. Thank you. Get outside this weekend. It'll be warm again.